this is a story coming in from a uh, GTA 5 actor uh, who claimed that he shot some stuff that was his quote uh, for DLC starring his character Trevor um, but that it was cancelled and that's why it never saw the light of day Mm. um this is the trevor stephen og who played um trevor and the dlc that was apparently named uh, agent trevor and was sort of james bond-esque um and was one of three cancelled expansions for the game alongside um uh, zombie apocalypse and alien invasion which never saw the light of day um i believe that they were they were they were sort of co-opted and then they were rolled into the online uh gta online right which is how this stuff yeah. was actually discovered um, because people did some cheeky data mining. Um, That's right, yeah. The they, da- data mining, I think, revealed the names of the expansions, and I right. think it was also data mining that was able to link some content that would later appear in some of GTA Online's updates with content that might have been planned for or adapted from these, you know, these originally what might have been a single player piece of DLC. But this is the first time beyond data mining that we've got any real kind of inclination that something like this existed or how far along it might have been beyond references in file names and so on um my first question to you knowing what a massive gta and specifically gta 5 fan you were slash are and i know how much you're looking forward to gta 6 how do you feel about the fact as someone who'd never really got on with gta online you know that much but um Mm -hmm. that there was some cancelled three in fact cancelled um dlcs how how does that sort of strike you um it strikes me as a, a little bit sad, but not all that disappointing. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I was looking at some conversation around this story on Reddit, and I think there are some people for whom the idea of cancelled or, or non-existent single-player DLC is still very much uh, an open wound. For me, it's a closed wound. That game is 11 years old at this point, and while there would have been, you know, a point in my life where I would have been, uh, even up till now, even you know, the, the, I would have been extremely interested in some more content for gta 5 in the same way i'd be interested for just about any content that you know rockstar would be willing to put their name on it um but it wasn't to be um it's one of those things that as we've discussed many many times on podcasts you know lately and of course going back months and years at this point that sometimes getting a little bit too upset over cancelled content while not knowing um why it was cancelled or you know how justified that cancellation was can be a little bit of a of a slippery slope. You know we don't know how early these things were. We don't know how you know how ambitious they were, how big they were going to be. You know for all we know that you know Agent Trevor it could have been a an eight hour long story expansion that could have been you know really cool and shown us a whole new side to one of you know GTA fans' favorite characters, or it could have been you know. A, a glorified like skin pack with some new outfits and some new weapons that had a cutscene at the beginning, and that that's what Stephen Ogg shot. You know, we, that's maybe a little bit harsh in terms of you know how slight this DLC could have been. But the point I'm making is that we just don't know, and so I I usually use that as a reason to not let myself get too disappointed about what could have been because it just there's a, there's you have to entertain a pretty large and, and and unquantifiable hypothetical to kind of get into that territory of. You know, life-changing DLC for GTA Five that we never got, and I think isn't, the other element. Sorry, it, go for it. I was gonna say, isn't it? Because on my brain, any time I hear something like this, it goes to this was gonna be the best possible thing they ever could have released. It would have been better than the main game. Like any time I hear DLCs cancelled or this was the idea, you're absolutely right. Like it could have been, yeah. it could have been some test shootings they did with the actor to kind of get a feel for whether they thought it was gonna be right, and then they went, you know what, this doesn't sort of work for us. Whereas in my brain, it's like, no, 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 this this was gonna be, uh, this was gonna be award worthy. This is gonna be fantastic dlc the thing that you have going for you in that argument at least is track record like it would be very unlike rockstar to um release something bad um so like you do have that like you know carrying some favor for uh you know your the version of this that existed in your head but i don't i don't know like the, the other thing we know about rockstar and this actually ties into the point i was just making about they're kind of their benchmark for quality and the and the the the, the levels they they set for themselves is that they do have a, you know, a, a extremely high aspirations when it comes to the kind of uh, the quality of the material they produce. We know you know from some kind of inside sources and reports around the time that Red Dead Redemption 2's development was extremely difficult because of just how 
higher, you know, how high a bar they set for themselves. And that there was lots of work that was done and then ripped up and restarted and done and ripped up and restarted. And that blueprint for what Red Dead Redemption 2 ended up being was completely reset multiple times. You know, it, it would not be remotely surprising to me if there was also some of that at play in um, in the GTA kind of DLC story. But again, all of this relies on kind of speculation that we just don't know and probably never will because we're talking about one of the most secretive game developers in the entirety of the industry. Um, one thing I will say, though, and this maybe is going to be a little bit controversial, um, but I'll say it anyway. I think the idea of an Agent Trevor DLC, whatever that would have entailed, sounds quite interesting. I think Trevor was one of the more interesting characters in that game, and I liked Stephen Hawke's performance very much. The idea of the zombie apocalypse and an alien invasion uh, single-player DLC, um, significantly less interesting to me. Now, yep. some people will immediately point to Undead Nightmare and say, look how seamlessly they crossed over you know the old west with zombies and made a really meaningful piece of dlc but even the idea of an undead nightmare style expansion for gta 5 that contained either zombies or aliens for some reason just doesn't uh you know tickle me in the same way that undead nightmare was able to i don't know i don't know why um but no i think, uh, I, think... I, I was more interested in you know sort of story driven and relatively speaking grounded content uh, to you know, if GTA GTA Five's world were to have been explored more than aliens and zombies, uh, I th I think you're you're bang on. Like if you think about the stuff they did do that had the a tied into the alien stuff for GTA Five, like it was side side content that was a bit you know it was okay, but you wasn't that interesting. Yeah, there um, were hallucinations and weird shit like that. Like it wasn't yeah. exactly. And when it comes to the alien side of it, like GTA Five is not the best game for, um, you know, shooting mechanics, for example. And a lot, if you're trying to sort of pick off headshots and stuff of zombies, that doesn't sound that exciting. And when you suddenly pair back that world from sort of like the hustle and the bustle to mindless drones following you around some streets in GTA, that like, doesn't actually sound that interesting to me. I'm, I think I'm totally right. with you. Whereas when you say trevor was going to be uh as they've said it was potentially going to be he was an undercover agent working with the or he was undercover working for the feds um and how you know he was just trying to do his best which is what they've said but he's still kind of a fuck up i think that sounds gta to me that sounds like yeah. you can imagine trevor in those scenes you can imagine the cut scenes you can imagine the things that could go wrong and the, the way that that mission formats would come out of that much more so than you can with alien invasion and um uh, a zombie sort of uh, apocalypse sort of situations um but then but then you know as you said we don't know where we were at with these dlcs we don't know whether they were um uh, just starting out with them and, and there must have been a reason they decided not to do them so yeah and like sometimes the, the filming for these things or the filming the performance capture can happen extremely early in the process um and not be representative of of what the finished products are going to look like and the other thing I wanted to quickly say when it comes to GTA 5, inevitably whenever there's a conversation about cancelled single-player content, expansions, DLC or anything like that, someone you know mentions the elephant in the room, which is GTA Online, and the extent to which Rockstar were distracted, I guess, um, by the popularity of that mode and the amount of uh, revenue it was able to gener generate for them. And uh, especially, I think, when you've got evidence that some of the single-player content was, was reworked or adapted... Uh, for GTA Online content, it kind of backs up some of those theories. But I I, I personally don't give them too much of a hard time for that. Um, I think, like, that... that That's part of the course game, in, in video game yeah. production, really, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, again, like, I know some people are disappointed with, um, with GTA Online and kind of, like, where it went, and a lot of people fell off over the years. But like, they, they did deliver some occasionally very big expansions to that and characters like franklin uh you know for example did return and we did get some payoffs and you know we did get you know, things that, that that made good on the groundwork laid out by gta 5 just in a format that you know whilst it wasn't appealing to, to you or i or i'm sure many of the people watching or listening was clearly you know uh relevant to you know the massive amounts of people who play that game mode and you know we can't sit here um sort of like begrudging an industry slump and uh, redundancies and layoffs and cancelled projects on one hand and criticize a game company for making money on the other like you know at some point you know you have executives you have suits you have 
um, pressure from higher ups. And when it, when one graph is going one way and another graph is going another way, you know, you often out of your hands. And if that put food on tables of Rockstar employees, then I don't really give a shit. The- no, no, that's fair. But um, uh, but yeah. Oh well. Well, hey, we can wait for GTA Six, and then we can see. Um, you know, we can all get our. Um, we can all eat the day that GTA Six comes out, and we can have a lot more GTA. Fun, Indeed. Um, Hell from yeah. That, from that single player perspective, but from a uh, a performance of Stephen Oggs that unfortunately we won't get to see that DLC content to a performance we will get to see because um we have had it confirmed that Keanu Reeves is going to be um, playing the role of Shadow in Sonic the Hedgehog 3, the movie, which comes out uh, next year, I believe. Um, uh, This comes from The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, this follows news that um, Paramount's debut showing of the Sonic the Three footage during CinemaCon last week, which reportedly included the revelation that Dr. Robotnik, played by Jim Carrey, was depressed and out of shape after the events of Sonic 2. If anyone remembers that, he basically gets um, he gets super powered in Sonic 2 and uh, with an emerald, Chaos Emerald and then gets all of that power sucked out of him. And I'm going to say, surprisingly, doesn't die. I thought he was... It was obvious, I suppose, that he was going to come back, but I'm pretty sure he was dead. So it's one of those. Uh, but then we also got the tease at the end of that one that Shadow was going to be in the um, the next movie. We got a little post credit scene. Um, yeah, so good to hear that Keanu Reeves is going to be picking up the... Um, Picking up the role of, of uh, voicing Shadow, who's going to help Robotnik get his groove back. Um, but mm. my, uh, my kids are going to be absolutely ecstatic to uh, see that Yes. Film. And that that, feel, that actually comes out this year. That's a December twentieth. Sorry, uh, yes, this year. release date. Blimey! Uh, at the moment, That's which reminds long. me, no, and I still haven't seen the second one yet. I still don't even know of Knuckles. Oh, and I'm ruining it for you, and you've not even seen it. My bad. Nah, no, ruining in inverted commas when it comes to the Sonic films. Like I thought, the first one was fine, um, but I, I'm actually like more excited about this direction than I thought I would be. I don't know what I'm more excited about. Um, Shadow being introduced and being voiced by Keanu Reeves, or Jim Carrey playing fat Doctor Robotnik. Um, it is it's like, funny because they like kind OG of egg, egg shaped Robotnik. Like. Yeah, because they've they've they started off where he looked completely wrong and different. Then in the second one, he was bald with the the like the wide mustache, and so now that he's going to be the the fat bald wide mustached Robotnik that we all love. I think that's I like I like that progression. I think that's pretty cool that they've done. Yes, that. that's, um, that's cool. Yeah, because I uh, uh, and I, I also like that, that Jim Carrey, like in this weird stage of it, this career that he's at, where he you know he still just for whatever reason just really likes doing these Sonic films. Either that or the check is massive. Probably a bit. He's of both. good. He's really good in them. Like. I, I can I can see why they like you know if people want to criticize them and say you know they're this they're that I love my kids absolutely love them and I love watching them with them they, we've watched each of them like about five times now um, <laughs> like I, so many times and there's a lot of fun to be had and yeah Jim Carrey's really good Idris Elba as Knuckles is really good um, I can never remember the guy's he's, name he's now he's now got his own show Knuckles right I think. oh it's out I totally for, yeah it comes out this I month think, I think yeah I think I read some reviews for that oh, it's today. Out already. I think it might be out um, on the thirtieth. Uh, let me just look it up while we're talking. So, so it's, you know, your kids will not, will not let you live that down if you don't keep uh, keep track of when that's coming out. Uh, so my eldest asked me the other day, which is why I know, which is why I was I know it's coming out very soon. Um, I think it's a five series limited run. Uh, let me just look it up on the Apple's TV here. series. It's twenty um, sixth of April, two premiere. days, Friday, in the, in the yeah. US. Apparently, it sounds like they're going to drop all six episodes at once, potentially, um, which is nice. Yeah, but that's um, no, yeah. that's cool. That's good. How good do you stuff. feel about um, Keanu? Obviously, like a, you know, a very fan, a fan favorite casting, and and you know, one of the internet's kind of like favorite children, but someone who has maybe received some criticism in the past for what have been like relatively flat or unusual <laughs> performances. It does seem like he's a little bit kind of. Like you don't know what you're gonna get with Keanu, um, like as, as someone who has a little more of a knowledge of what I than I do of what to expect from Sonic films in terms of, you know, the you know, the comedy and the delivery and things like that. How do you feel about it all? Um, the, when I when I initially found out about it from you actually by via WhatsApp, yeah. um, I was a little bit hesitant because I thought I think the energy uh, might be lacking. Uh, totally. but, but then at the same time like I didn't think Knuck, that Knuckles would have been well served being voiced by Idris Elba and I think he did a great job and I think it, it worked totally for the character um, Shadow is supposed to be like this 
you know, darker, more brooding character than Sonic. He's got like Sonic's alter ego, like it's like Sonic and um, uh, Shadow, right? So I actually think that it could work really well. And when you consider the fact that we did get a very good performance, I think as Johnny Silverhand from Keanu Reeves in Cyberpunk 2077, um, I'm a lot more positive than maybe I would have been uh, before having played Cyberpunk. Um, yeah. So no, I'm 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 looking forward to. It. I think it's uh, I think it's a, a cool casting. Anything with Keanu in is cool. It's just, it's like you said. You're just you don't know if you're gonna get gold standard Keanu or like occasionally phones it in a little bit Keanu because he's just Keanu. He can do what he wants. We'll see. Yeah, I feel like his his reputation for phoning it in has kind of improved a little bit. And there have been uh, yeah, agree. In the last ten years, there have been more and more performances that appear to be indicative of a Keanu who kind of knows what his reputation is and is able to kind of tap into what he's being asked to do rather than like you know just reading the script and being himself like there's evidence that he he's a little bit more in on the joke than he might have been at times right. like, do you, like do you know which one which, I, I think i'm sure you'd have seen it because of the kids but which uh voice performance actually like won me over in terms of i think he gets it was actually when he plays the um the stunt man or the stunt driver in Toy Story Four, the evil Knievel style um, guy. I've not seen it. You've not seen Toy Story Four. Toy Story Four. I'm not oh, a big Toy okay. Story family. Uh, fair enough. Me. Fair enough. Um, I, well, Toy Story Four is, is a good Toy Story as it goes. Um, they went from not needing to make another one to actually making a pretty darn good one, I thought. Uh, but he plays. I can't remember the character's name for the life of me, but he plays kind of. Um, a, a sort of almost like an, an anxiety riddled version of Evil Knievel in obviously in toy form. Right. Kind of want to be one of these toys that like you would drop and they would go and do a loop of the loop and fly uh, off. Yeah, He's yeah. one of those. Okay. Um, um, and kind of it's that weird sort of like blend of kind of some of that Johnny Silverhand esque machoism kind of, uh, but with a sort of a sort of a sensitive side. Um, and I thought he pulls it off quite nicely. Um, so yes. Um, fingers crossed that all that all works out well for Sonic. 